In this video we're going to very quickly work through the process for importing a 3D model, sizing and orienting it and creating 3D roughing, finishing and a 2D cutout toolpath. There's a longer version of this video where we're going to more detail on each of the steps if you want to follow along. Here we're just going to show you the process and how quick and easy it is to do. Let's start a new copy of the software. So let's click on the icon to create a new file and our work area for this job is going to be 10 inches by 10 inches by 3 quarters of an inch thick, Z0 off the top of the block, XY 0 in the lower left corner, working in inches, model resolution set to standard and we'll hit OK. Now we're going to come down to the modeling tab and click on the icon to import a 3D object going to select the file Magnolia Flower from the project folder and hit open. We'll see a grayscale representation of that in the 2D view. And if we go up to view, tile windows vertical, I can see the 2D view and the 3D view on the right here. And the part of the model that overlaps the work area is visible in the 3D view. If I want to see all of that, I can click, drag that into the center here and I can use any of the standard dynamic editing handles for this the same way that I would for a vector. So I can take it and stretch to make it larger. You'll see that update in the 2D and 3D. And I can use the same handles in the 3D view as well. So I can stretch that, I can rotate it, and you'll see both copies or both visualizations of that object will update. Now as well as using the dynamic handles, I can use the specific editing tools. So if we come to the drawing tab, and I'm just going to undo those operations to go back to the state where we just imported it. Now I'm going to select here to align that in the middle of my material. I'm going to change its size by specifying a width of 9 inches. And I'm going to rotate that 5 degrees, close and also create a mirrored copy of it. So we'll mirror the object, flip about job center flip horizontal so we create what is effect a sort of right hand copy and now I can just recenter that again just to make sure that's in the middle of the job. Now the last thing to do before we're ready to start cutting this is to check its height. If we come down to the modeling tab, click on the object to select it, click on the wrench. The height at the moment is 0.4976. I can adjust that to be 0.55 of an inch hit the space bar so that updates and then hit close. Now I'm ready to go over to the toolpaths tab so I can hit F12 on the keyboard. Just go up to view and tile the windows vertical and we'll just click to deselect the object there. Now I'm going to hit set to check my material setup. Z0 at the top of the block, material thickness 3 quarters of an inch, XY0 in the lower left corner now I'm going to come down and check the position of the 3D object within my block. I can position that with the slider or I can enter a value in here. I'm going to enter 0.05 of an inch so I have a little bit of clearance above the model and some material still left below it when we cut it. Rapid and home position are both good so we can hit OK. Now the first toolpath we're going to use will be the 3D roughing toolpath. If we come up and click on the icon here what this is going to do is hog out the majority of material for us and get us ready to go in with a smaller tool to do the finishing. I'm going to select from the tool database quarter inch end mill for this, hit OK. I'm going to hit edit and just change the pass depth to be 0.2 of an inch. That'll just adjust the number of levels I get. Boundary offset is a distance that the tool is going to come past the edge of the part to ensure that it can get down the side of my 3D objects. So I'm going to leave that set to 0.25. Machining allowance 0.03 of an inch is an extra skin of material that will be left on the part to make sure there's something left for the finishing to cut and to reduce the chance of the roughing chipping the model. We're going to use the Z level strategy and I'm not going to choose to ramp in this case but let's go ahead and give this an appropriate name and hit calculate. We'll see the software draws the toolpath for us in the 3D view and opens the preview toolpath form. If we go to the ISO view and click on preview, we can see what the block will look like after we've roughed it with that tool. So 
Z-level roughing is effectively cutting down in 2D levels to machine the majority of the material away. Now we can close the preview, click on the icon for the finishing. Now I'm going to use a smaller ball nose tool for the finishing, so we'll use a 1 8 uh, diameter ball nose. The step over is important. I should make sure this is around 8 to 10% of the tool diameter to get a nice smooth finish. So we can hit apply and OK, I'll just take the defaults for that. Again I'm going to use the model boundary, boundary offset 0.1, I'm going to raster machine this to an angle of 0 and I'll give this an appropriate name again and hit calculate. Now we can preview the finish and we'll see when that's done that we get a part that looks much more like our original 3D model. If we just maximise the 3D view we can see exactly the type of finish and detail we're going to get with that tool and those cutting parameters. If I like the way that looks then we can proceed to the cutout toolpath. Let's close the preview toolpath form. We'll come back over to the drawing tab and pin that out. Click on the 2D view and just hit F to fit that. Now I'm going to come down to the modeling tab. I'm going to select my object which I can do from the tree or the 2D view and click on the icon here to create a vector boundary. And if I just click to deselect, what that's done is created a vector around the edge of my selected 3D object. And that we can use now to do a profile cutout around. So if we hit F12 on the keyboard to go back over to the toolpath tab, make sure our outer vector is selected there. Click on the profile icon. I'm going to cut all the way through the material, so we'll put in 0.75. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill tool. I'm going to edit that so the pass depth is a quarter of an inch, so we'll get three passes to cut through this material. I'm going to cut around the outside of that selected vector, and I'm not going to ramp or add tabs in this case. Let's just call that profile, cut out, and then some information about the tool. Calculate, so there we can see the toolpath. Now I can preview that toolpath. We've cut all the way through. And because we have no tabs, I can double click in order to delete the waste material so we can see exactly what that part will look like after we've roughed, finished and cut it out. Again, if we like the way that looks, we can close the preview toolpath form. We're ready to select our toolpath, hit save toolpath, choose a post processor appropriate to our machine or control and actually start to save that file out. And that would be the file we take across and run on the CNC. So I'd have one file for the roughing, one for the finishing, which I'd save, and one for the profile, which I'd save there. There's also a copy of this saved in the project folder as well. So that concludes the short version of this tutorial. There is a longer version of this where we go into a much more detailed explanation of each of the stages involved. So you can watch that if you want to follow along with the example. Thanks for watching the video.